Good morning, Squid Schoolers, and welcome to another edition of Map Mode of the Day. Today we're going to be talking about Moray Rainmaker. If you would like input on which map mode we do on a given day, uh, which ones I'm going to do first, because I am trying to get through all of them, but if you want priority on the one that you're interested in learning about, I give a poll out every so often to my Patreon supporters, and they get to choose which of the map modes I'm going to focus on first. Um, so if you want that kind of input, you have the Patreon link in the description. I really appreciate the support. It helps me make this channel into something that I might actually be able to support myself on and makes it so that you guys can get much more content than you would be able to get otherwise. So I would really appreciate you taking a look into that, but even just a like or a subscription to the channel is so huge for helping grow this. So appreciate that kind of support as well. So. Let's get started by talking about the objective line on this crazy map. As we established in the previous episode, which was also a Rainmaker in Skipper Pavilion, Rainmaker is one of the more complicated maps to draw an objective line for, because the Rainmaker carrier is able to move the objective line to multiple different locations on the map and where they move to forces the defensive side to shift and defend those positions and forces their team to advance and clear out different positions depending on where they want to go on moray towers there are a lot of problems with moray towers competitively but variety of places to take the rainmaker is not one of them um, there are a lot of really interesting shortcuts that you can use to get points in all sorts of different routes on this map the objective lines if we were to draw them just based on the rainmaker paths would be incredibly complex but i don't think it's really accurate to show them that way because really there are only so many directions that you're going to have to push to make it safe to take any number of different routes in that direction. So I'm really only going to show a couple of them. The first one will look something like this. And then the second one will look about like this. One of the interesting things about both of these routes is that at any point in, in time, you can kind of call an audible and go over to the other one. From here, you could actually rotate up to this side. And even earlier on than that, if you get to this location and realize that there's a lot of defense up on overlook here, that's what that's called in the callouts, you can just call an audible and rotate in this direction and just move on to the other objective line. And you can do the same thing from here. If there's too much defense over here, you in theory have the option to rotate over and take that line over there. So this is, I think, a pretty good description of where the Rainmaker push is probably going to go. Now there's a lot, like I said, that we haven't pictured here. You could, for example, go this way or you could go this way. You could take this rail by jumping from this rail over to this rail over to the goal. That's an option. Um, you can also paint up this wall right here and swim it from here over to the goal. So there are a lot of really interesting shortcuts that you can take here. But the reason that the objective lines are not going to change as a result of those is that the space you have to control to make those pushes safe are still along the same objective lines. If you want to be able to make this push, then you need to clear out this area, just like if you were just going up over the top. If you want to take this rail push, well, you need to clear out this area around this line, just like you would if you were going over the ground. So I don't think it makes a huge difference, despite the fact that there are so many different ways you could accomplish this. One thing we haven't even talked about is that you can actually get up on top of this box paint this wall right here, jump off the box, land in the wall, and swim up. So that's another route that you could potentially take. That's one of the rarer ones because it's one of the more vulnerable ways to get up there. 
but it's an option. And if you can get onto the wall usually uh, before somebody shoots you out of it, then you get up there probably quicker than you do on either other route. But again, you have to control the same space. If you want to make that a safe jump to do, you have to control this area right here. And that's right over objective lines that we've already drawn. So this is where I'm going to leave this. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit about the role that different weapons are going to play in pushing the Rainmaker along those tracks. We'll start with Slayers and Skirmishers, as we usually do. As usual, we'll say, just like we always have, that the Slayer or Skirmisher's job is to push the team's area of control further so that they are able to advance their Rainmaker further on the objective line. As we mentioned in our previous Rainmaker video, where the Rainmaker is, you can think of as your team's point on the objective line, and the Slayers and Skirmishers should be on a small circle probably about this big, not that much bigger, and they should be right on the perimeter of that circle so that they can prevent anyone on the enemy team from getting close enough to the Rainmaker to threaten it. So what does that mean for traversing these different objective lines? I'm going to switch to a different color here, make it a little bit easier so we don't get confused um, with our... Uh, a whole bunch of red ink on the page. Let's start by talking about this side of the map. We'll talk about the, the top push and then go down to the bottom. If you're going to take the top push, then the first defensive stronghold you're going to have to clear to make it safe for the Rainmaker to advance is going to be this area right here where the Clan Blitz goal would be in that mode. You're probably going to have someone go up over the top of the wall before it gets there, and you're probably going to have someone come up over here, you might have someone push in here. You're going to want to make sure that this area is cleared out so that the Rainmaker doesn't get dropped on by somebody. Because um, while it has a lot of cover, it also doesn't have a very clean escape route if a, a short-range weapon gets on top of it. Um, if I'm a tri slosher player, the Rainmaker's right here, and I'm able to drop down on it over this wall. The Rainmaker Carrier does not make it out of that. Before the Rainmaker can get anywhere near there, before it can be safe in this location, you're going to have to clear this all out. Typically, uh, with a short-ranged weapon, you're not going to have the hardest time doing that because you have this ledge right here to protect you from, say, an E-Leader player standing on this wall. You have this wall right here, which is a great ambush area. It's really hard to see over in either direction. So if you sit and shark on that wall and then pop up as soon as someone shows themselves, that's really strong. Uh, something that can be helpful for both uh, Slayers and Skirmishers and for the Rainmaker later is from this location right here on the ramp, there's a wall right here that you can actually paint for yourself and you're able to hop into this wall and then hop up over the top. And uh, as far as you've got painted, you're able to hop up over the side. But it's a great way, for example, if someone is maybe like using um, this area right here for cover, um, so it's hard to hit them from either this direction or this direction, it can be a way to flank them. So you get in around them like this. Um, and it's also just a great way to get up over the top if uh, they're like pre-firing these two positions. Definitely recommend that. That's a useful trick that's come in handy for a lot of different purposes. As the Rainmaker Carrier, you do not want to be on this position until you have a good chunk of space cleared out around it. Make sure as Slayers, you're immediately addressing anything that's going to be here well before the Rainmaker tries to get there. Because if uh, the Rainmaker Carrier gets a little bit too overzealous and runs into this area while it's still under enemy control, you're in big trouble. The next and probably most nasty part of this entire push is getting control of Overlook up here. There are some weapons that make that push nearly impossible. Um, if you've got a dynamo roller sitting up here and just sloshing this entire cone, <laughs> it's, it's probably not quite that big, but it feels like it sometimes. I just recommend going someplace else. Um, 
it's just so hard to push up against that. And something that's really important to understand about how scoring works in this path. While you are still swimming in the wall, you're only going to be at like 82 or 83. Even, you know, the whole way up the wall, you do not score any points until your feet touch the ground. Now, you can touch the ground on these grates here, and you, your score will immediately jump up as soon as you land on them. So, you don't just have to make it all the way up. If, for example, your opponents have only scored to like 50, and you want to get lead, swim up, drop on the first grate there, and that gets you to like 49, and I think the second grate is something like 45, if I remember correctly. You can drop it there and still get some points, but... It's so easy to drop a bomb onto these ledges. It's so easy to slosh up over the top with any weapon that can do that. You only want to go up here if there is a Slayer or Skirmisher who has already made it up, has already started pushing this way and cleared people out, because otherwise this can just be a brick wall that you throw yourselves at and never make it past 83. This is probably the optimal push if you can get up the wall, because once you get up the wall, this is so much easier. You've got this really nice narrow path to try and push up. You've got plenty of cover. You've got cover here, you've got cover here on your way up. It's also a very flankable defensive position. So yeah, your main body is going to be going in this way, but it's super easy for one of your slayers to peel off and go up this way. They'll get there at about the same time. And if there's someone annoying behind this piece of cover, well, they're, they're gonna come up behind it. Once you're here, you're in business. And getting it to hereabouts gets you to into the 30s. Or it's, it's a pretty strong push once you get that far. The big challenge is, can you clear this area? If you can, then this push succeeds. If you cannot, you may as well have just gone someplace else. Let's talk about the other route, and then let's talk about how Slayers and Skirmishers should really kind of be playing both. The other route, the first area to clear out is going to be Snipe up here. This is a great flank anyway, if you're able to get there safely. The tough part for a Slayer is getting over to here safely, because if there's, for example, an E-Leader on this position looking down at you, that often doesn't end well. I, I typically find it much safer if there's like a heavy backline weapon instead to roll out in this direction and try to take position from here. Usually, you know, you can sneak around and maybe get a pick in this area, and then you have threat on the backliner in this direction. So that's my preferred route usually. But if you do manage to sneak over and get into this angle, this is a big threat to a, a charger player or something. Because you can come up this wall from three different locations. You can come up from behind this block, you can come up from in front of this block, and you can come up from like right in the E-leader's face. And uh, depending on where they are, you'll want different different ideas there. And they kind of have to very specifically check this location down here to be able to see you. It's not the easiest thing for them to keep tabs on perfectly. Now that said, typically on a, a team that knows what it's doing, you're going to have maybe some kind of midline weapon skirmishing in this area to defend the backline weapon um, and also you know, prevent you from getting into that position in the first place. So you've got to watch out. Going this way up until about this point is very unsafe. But once you're able to get past it, then you have a bunch of different options. Then you can be really threatening. Once you've taken this area, the Rainmaker is safe to move up to about here. Um, and from there, we need to start pushing up in this direction. Um, so... Slayers and Skirmishers need control of this area, and that allows the Rainmaker to push up to low pipe here. And if they just, you know, kind of run themselves into the wall here, they can get to about 45 or so. Those are decent points, but what you're really hoping to do when you get here is to be able to swim it all the way up the wall. Because getting over the wall right here jumps you from like 42 or something to about 16. Um, that's a huge point gain, and that can often be game-winning points if you're able to pull it off. So that's something to threaten for sure. But if this wall is heavily guarded or something, then the Rainmaker's next best idea is to just go up this way instead and try and get around the corner and play it like you were going in the other direction. Once you've gotten to this point or this point... <laughs> 
Once you've gotten to this point or this point, as a Slayer, really your job is actually to have both options covered. Because at this point in time, you have access to this area and also to this area pretty easily, even if you're doing the opposite side push. It's also a good idea to threaten the rail. Um, if you can get the Rainmaker from rail to rail, then that's something your opponents have to look at. They have to shoot at this rail to make sure that it is painted the color they want it to be, and that might give you openings. Um, you, basically, all of this is a zone that you kind of want to be thinking about once you're in this area, because you can get a lot done in any of those different locations, and as long as the Rainmaker stays safe, going either way is probably going to get you some benefit. Um, something you might want to consider doing, just in case your Rainmaker Carrier happens to spot it, is if you are down here trying to paint up the side, instead of just focusing on painting up straight to the top, also if you maybe have burst bombs or something, consider putting some burst bombs on this wall. If you've got a little bit of extra time, maybe try and set that up and see if the Rainmaker Carrier sees what you're going for and, and uh, goes for it. Because you can hop over to here, here and be at like 10. If you hop over this wall, I think you're at like 8. You're super close. Um, so that's something to look for and potentially paint for uh, if you've got the time and the resources to get there. Typically, this point and this point are where you're going to really meet heavy resistance. Um, once you're there um, as the Rainmaker Carrier, it's just kind of a sprint. You're just looking for where is the best place that I can possibly push. Because um, anywhere past, I would say, here on the objective line is probably going to be points that you could potentially win the game with. Um, so once you get there, you can start playing a little bit fast and loose and just kind of go for it and see where, um, where you can get the most and suicide it in for that if you need to. Supports. Like we mentioned in the previous video, you are usually the best suited weapon to be picking up the Rainmaker. And so everything we've talked about Rainmaker pathing is something to bear in mind. Um, as the Rainmaker carrier on this map, you need to be keeping a close eye on what you actually have control over and making sure that uh, you're taking the Rainmaker on the path that is most likely to be successful. If you look up here and see that your Slayers have just cleared this area out, that's where you want to be pushing. Because if you push over to this side, when this is where your strength is, you're going to be undefended, you're very likely to get dropped on by somebody over here, it's kind of hard sometimes to assess where the enemy defense is going to be because they're going to respawn and they're going to come out like here or something or here and like from these positions, it's really hard to see them. You're very unlikely to know where they're going to be coming from. So you need to be keeping an eye on uh, where your teammates are pushing up in front of you to know where you have advantage. Once you get to this point, seriously consider the rail because this rail... Um, if you have a teammate who pushes up and paints the second rail for you, again, the rail extends far enough that you can actually jump from one rail, land on the other, and then from this rail, you can jump onto this platform, which gets you about 16. You can jump a little bit further, I think, and get to even fewer points remaining. So that play is very, very fast and gets you a lot of points quickly, as long as someone sets you up with the second rail. If somebody doesn't set you up at the second rail, there is tech that you can execute to shoot the second rail yourself from the first rail. It's something you'd probably want to practice before you attempt it in a game, in you know the situation where you need to get it right the first time or else you fall and lose the Rainmaker. But it is definitely an option. The one big downside to it is that if you get splatted off the rail, the Rainmaker just spawns back at the rail. It's something you really only want to go for if this whole area around here is under your control. Um, anyone in this circle can probably stop that from happening if they're there, but if your Slayers have you know, cleared them out, even for a second or two, um, that's something that will get you massive points pretty quickly. So be on the lookout for that. Running yourself into this wall is usually not the best idea. If someone's shooting down at you, if someone's painting this, most you're gonna get to is like 43, I think. 
if that's less than you need for lead, at some point cut your losses. Either back up and start shooting shots up over the top to try and clear things out, flush people out for your slayers. Or if you're given the opportunity, you could just move it back up this way um, and threaten to use this rail. Um, you could just play the slow steady push around the corner. You've got some options going up that way as long as that's cleared out for you. Um, just make sure you are pushing uphill. So if someone happens to be sharking down here and then just walks forward and, and hits you from there, might be something that surprises you. Uh, make sure, again, that you have a slayer that goes up in front of you before you try something like that to paint this up and clear it out so that you know it's safe for sure. If you're not the Rainmaker Carrier and you are a support player on this map, uh, make sure that you are saving your specials specifically for the points where your Slayers are going to have the hardest time pushing people out. So if you're going right side, that's going to be here, and that's going to be around here. And if you're going left side, that's going to be here, here, and then hereabouts on the third leg. Especially if you have something like uh, missiles, um, this right here is the place to use those. Right when, you know, time it for when you've either got a Slayer who's going up in this direction to try and flank these people, or if you've got someone who's bravely trying to forge onwards up the wall. Um, give them a little bit of support on the way up, because this is a very difficult push for them to pull off. In the meantime, anytime you have some kind of backline weapon, and E-Leaders do love to play this map mode, um, make sure you're trying to get bombs on them when you can. The more they have to shift around, the more that they have to move, um, the fewer random shots they're going to get on your Slayers, killing the push before it starts. So always be applying that sort of pressure to the backliners. Speaking of backliners, here is Devi's backline positioning map. Again, red is places where you would traditionally play offense. Purple is places where you would traditionally play defense. Blue is a non-traditional position that Debbie doesn't see many people other than her using, but that she likes. Um, she plays Hydra Splatling. Bear that in mind. E-Leader in particular is well favored on this map because being able to stand here or stand on these ledges gives you so much control over what's going on in mid. You can get hit from here by an E-Leader, you can get hit from here by an E-Leader, they can see you coming from a mile away over here and take shots at you from even snipe. So they have a really strong control over mid. On top of that, even if they get pushed back, this position is just nasty for an E-Leader or anywhere along this line. Um, because, like, you can, you know, push this area as the frontliner, but a smart backliner is going to see that coming, and what they're going to do is they're just going to rotate back in this direction. And now they have high ground still, and you still haven't caught them. So a backliner right here is still dangerous, even if you've gotten control of this area. Um, and so that's something to watch out for. You, you either need to make them miss a shot or just not challenge it very much. Throw, throw bombs, use specials to displace them. Or maybe flank them from up the wall or something like that, if the other team allows that to happen. Um, but the backliner can always just keep backing up. They can back up to here. And from these kinds of positions in this area, they have shots on somebody on the wall. So you, if you're trying to get up this wall, you don't just need to have this area cleared out. You need to have this area cleared out. And again, they can just keep backing up. They can right side PQ around this box. They can be standing up over here if they've just spawned in and haven't had enough time to get in position and you're starting to push this far on the objective line. They can just be up above that. There's always high ground. There's always more high ground on this map. This area is so uncommonly used that a lot of the time the, the leader or whatever can just like line up a snipe from right here and people don't even see it coming. The more range you can have on here, the more you're able to take advantage of this constantly escalating high ground. And one of the best positions also um, is gonna be right here, right peeking around this ledge, if you need to stop a push right before it gets to leave. You've got the high ground to work with, you've got a great line of sight up until you, you get to this piece of cover, which they have to left side peek around. If you're in a you know, last ditch situation, the only way that they get around this sight line is by painting this side wall. And hopefully you spotted that out while it was happening and you're able to maybe get up on top of this wall to do something about it. <laughs> 
as we talk about key positions here, I'm going to first start off by talking about a position that you want to avoid at all costs, which is mid. This box right here is a massive kill zone. Um, you want to pass through here as quickly as possible and get to some place that actually has cover most of the time. Um, not just because there's the Rainmaker shield which might explode on you, but because any kind of long range weapon up here or right here or even maybe posted up in this area is going to have an advantage over you. Um, even a, a mid-range weapon right here is going to be a big pain in the butt until you can get up underneath these ledges here. So make sure that you are respecting the danger that is mid. Typically you're going to want to go out to one of the two sides and that makes sense because those also follow the objective lines. You're going to be pushing the Rainmaker to one of the sides anyway, might as well go out to one of those sides, already have paint ready to go for it to move through, rather than trying to like run it face first up this wall. This area right here called Street on either side is very dangerous. Um, if there is ever a short ranged weapon in there, they probably have advantage over you. Um, and so make sure that you approach this ledge with a lot of caution or this ramp with a lot of caution. Um, coming around a blind corner and running into, into a brush or a tri slosher on this spot, uh, it's, it's something that can ruin your day. So be really, really careful about that when you're trying to approach this area, unless you know for a fact that you got there first. Clearing this position of something like a midliner that's trying to protect snipe can be huge. So if you're like a backliner and you see a free pick on someone over there, absolutely take it because that will open up the route for a slayer to come around this way and start threatening the other side snipe. Clear out the other backliner and that will give you the positioning that you need to move up. This rail is practically useless for the purposes of attacking snipe. Any player S plus or higher generally sees that coming a mile away and just shoots you off the rail. Maybe you're able to back up on the rail and then you're all the way back here and you haven't made any progress. Don't use it for that reason. Snipe and clam goal. Taking control of snipe, um, like we mentioned, is going to happen going through this way or going over here most of the time. Although if you've got a push that's already on its way, uh, you can often get people around in this direction to threaten that way. Um, and that's a, something that's, you know, if they're expecting players to be in front of them here and you come up from this way, that's often a flank that'll catch a backliner off guard. Make sure that you are aware that this box can absolutely be hiding players. Lots of backliners love to hide here. Lots of players like to put beacons on that location because it's so relatively safe. Um, if you notice somebody over relying on this spot, that's when you try to take this flank angle so that you come up from behind the box. This is also a great way to sneak up on a charger who's all the way forward on the ledge here because you are coming from 180 degrees straight behind them, hard for them to see coming. For Clam Goal, the way to approach that is actually really interesting. I think one of my favorite parts of this map is this area right here. Always paint the back of this wall because painting the back of this wall as the approaching team, it gives you a way to pop up over the top of cover. Remember an E-leader standing maybe like right here can hit you. So you wanna paint the whole wall and that way they don't know if you're gonna pop up over the left side, over the right side. As soon as you get up over the top of that wall, you're hightailing it to be behind cover here or here as long as uh, the area in front of you is cleared out and you're not having to fight with someone who is just rolling out in this location. Then you're gonna use cover on the way up this ramp, or you're going to come up over the top of the wall here to try and surprise someone here. Or if you don't feel like doing one of those, or you think you've got a better angle, you could in theory try to sneak through mid and come up this way. So maybe a little bit more visible depending on where the opponents are, but it's a great option, especially if somebody's already pushing this way to take the more visible route and get their attention on here so that you can skirmish for this player to show up and ruin their day. Obviously, I'm talking from the, the Slayer's perspective of where to push, but if you're a defensive player, keep in mind that all of those plays might happen. Taking an, a position maybe up here is great for having line of sight on most of this developing. Um, one of the great 
benefits of being on this ledge is that this area right here is completely exposed to you. Uh, so you can catch someone in the act of going that way, and that's why I usually recommend going from the left side first. This location right here is a good piece of cover to be using in the, the fights either f in this direction for snipe, or if somebody's up on top of this wall. And again, make sure that, you know, if you're the defending team, you don't have a complete lapse and allow someone to get up this wall and sneak up for faster points. This location here is one of the most difficult to fight over, one of the strongest defensive strongholds. If you're up here, drop bombs on these ledges, drop bombs on them below, throw rain over the top. There are a lot of things that can just fall straight down on the opponents here and they have barely any counterplay. This is also one of the few places in the game where if you have Splashdown, you can probably pretty reliably use it. It's gonna take an E-leader down here looking straight up at you to be able to hit at that kind of range. Um, so that's probably not going to get canceled. One really nasty thing about Splashdown is that if you use it from down here and someone is right on the ledge starting to peek over, the hitbox goes straight up. It, it goes really, really high and it will actually just kill them off the ledge here if they peek out too far. Once you're here, um, this is a relatively defensible position as the attacking team. You can kind of breathe easy now. You've got a little bit of cover. You've got some space to back up. Um, this ledge here is some really nice cover in a pinch, and uh, it's a great place for the Rainmaker to, to hole up while their teammates try to clear out the rest of this area for them. Once, you know, the opposing team, if you're on defense, has taken this area, now you need to start setting up in a position like this, in a position like this, maybe if you've got the range to use this area here, and uh, start getting ready for them to try and push uphill at you. Um, you need to be able to use that advantage of them having to push uphill. Um, also, make sure that you're watching so that if somebody tries to sneak up this way, you've got a way to stop that. This is pretty easy to paint out if you spot it. You can just paint straight down from here and physically prevent them from ever getting up the wall any higher. So if they are really trying to force that, just sit up here and go, ha 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 ha, you can't move. And even if you have a really hard time hitting them, as long as you're still firing shots here, they're not going to get past like 43. Um, and they're going to need somebody to like flank around or something before you get to pick on the Rainmaker. So this is relatively easy to shut down, but you need to be watching it. And watching it is really the hardest part because it's straight down over the ledge. Paint can go down there. And if you're not like checking down there with your camera, you might easily miss it because you're just over focusing on, on this side right here. This position right here is relatively vulnerable and exposed, but it gives you access to two different good pushing locations. So if you're able to lock this down as the defensive team, um, that can definitely severely limit the enemy team's push. Even if they're trying to come from this way, if you lock this area down, you're, they're all funneled into one area that is a lot easier to defend if you don't have to worry about a flank coming up from behind you. So that would be a great area to try and focus on if you're spawning in. Quick trick for every weapon in this, uh, this map, not even just this mode. So dropping down from spawn from here is generally the correct idea most of the time, unless they happen to be like right at the goal, in which case you might actually need to use some of this and maybe jump across and use the high ground against them. But what a lot of people do right after this is drop down here onto Snipe. And this is the place where everybody is looking for people to spawn in. You'll see frontliners sharking here all the time just to mop people up for trying to take the lazy way in. What you can actually do, and it's especially important if the Rainmaker is threatening to go this way instead, is drop here, but then take this route, drop down this way, and now you have quicker access to Overlook, and you're also able to see out over here and get information, figure out where the push is coming from. Um, this is something I don't see people doing nearly enough. Um, way too many people just drop down here and feed to a roller who's sitting on the enemy snipe. Like, come on, they're a roller. You knew they were going to be there. Go out someplace more creative. Finally, this piece of cover I would say is one of the strongest for a late game defensive push. Um, if you're able to flush this out as the attacking team, they really are forced all the way back to goal. Um, so 
throw bombs around here, use specials on that position, because that lets the Rainmaker get up this way, that lets the Rainmaker go pretty far in this direction. If you can get rid of that piece of cover, there's only so much the enemy team can do. Maybe like one weapon could be up here doing something about it. Other than that, it's going to be people standing at goal and hoping that they can just stop it before it KOs. So that, I would say, is kind of the last bastion of the enemy defense. If you can breach that, then you're in really good shape. So, main goals. And this is going to feel a bit like a review at this point, because we've probably already covered a good amount of this in depth. But you're going to go one of two different directions, for the most part, as the Rainmaker Carrier. They're going to either need to clear out this for you, and then this for you, and then this for you. Or they're going to need to clear out this, and then this, and then either here or here. Here to here, either up this, over this rail, or around to here, to the goal. Or, like we said, painting up this side. I consider that the same as going up the side. But you can just go up the side and come over the top and go that, that way too. Or, going left, you're going to control this area, you're going to go up the wall, you're going to come over here, and then you can, again, take either the rail, go straight this way. I generally recommend not going this way just because you get more points going this way, whereas if you go this way, you're moving backwards in terms of the points that you have. Um, you don't get more points until you get up over the, the ledge here. So once you're in this location, and it's usually not advisable to go back in this direction, but the option is there if you really need it. Um, and again, depending on which options you have available to you, which weapons are on the enemy team, where they're positioned, um, different places to go will be advantageous. Make sure, as always, that you're not pushing alone, that you're letting a frontliner go out wherever you try to go in front of you, and you're not getting yourself isolated from the rest of the team. As frontliners, make sure to paint up all of the tricky positions that they might be able to take. You know, paint this wall so that they could potentially jump. Make sure to try and keep this wall painted whenever you have an opportunity. Paint as much of this wall as you can so that they have a way up when they need it and uh, always be kind of keeping tabs on what's happening to the Rainmaker. Rainmaker is one of those modes where a single flank can completely change the course of the game, and flanks can happen all over the place on this map. You can come from either side of one of the bridges, or you can, of course, drop down over the top of one of the very, very many high ground positions with something like a roller flick already ready to go on landing. So you have to be very aware. You have to have your head on a swivel. This is one of those map modes where you camera control is actually extremely important because you kind of need to be, you know, on offense pushing this way, you're going uphill the whole way. So you kind of want your camera focused a little bit higher than usual so that you can keep tabs on things like what's going on up here, what's going on up here. And of course on defense, you're going to be tilting your camera a little bit on the low side to look down over these ledges. Just make sure that you have the highest chance possible of seeing out of your peripheral vision where that flank is coming from. That's going to do it for Moray Rainmaker for our map mode of the day. Thank you all for watching. Again, if you would like input on which map mode we do next, go and support on the Patreon and you get access to that poll with all the rest of the supporters for which one I'm going to prioritize. I am trying to get to all of these, but the order in which I do them is all up to you guys. Please consider leaving a like and a subscription to support the channel. I am trying to do this professionally, would appreciate being able to continue doing it, and that's a great way to help it grow, even if you can't support it financially. That's all I got. See you next time.